in the future is going to be far, far more worse than what we are facing right now. I think few years, few, few years down the line, we will, the ones who are alive, uh, facing those uh, seven vials of the wrath of God, will will make a statement that COVID-19 was much better. So those days are are coming. Those days are we are uh, we are going to get in 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 those days pretty soon, and and that's why we need to pray more than we ever prayed before. If there was a there was a time the church needed to pray, is this time. Uh, there needs to be more prayer in our personal lives, more prayer in our family family time, more prayer uh, in going on in our hearts and in, in our in our in our lives, in our families. We need to be more prayerful than we ever were. Uh, and and because this earth is is as I said is deteriorating and and uh, we are approaching the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, as the scripture calls, the, the, the day of the, of the Lord, which is the last, last days, as we enter those days. See, not this physical earth is, is deteriorating. This earth will stay, but this age that we are in is, 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 is getting bad and bad. But there's a promise here in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew and chapter 5. Uh, where Jesus is talking about the Beatitudes. Matthew 5 and verse 5, it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, what does it mean to inherit the earth? Uh, what does it mean? I mean, I mean this is not what... Uh, 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 what, what does it mean uh, when it says, Blessed are the meek in spirit? For they shall inherit the earth. Does the inheriting the earth mean more riches or a better house, a better job? Uh, is, is, is this the earth that I am hoping to inherit? Uh, then this is not what a meek person longs for. Uh, the, a meek person that Jesus was mentioning here, blessed are the meek, uh, they are not longing for a better house or a better job or a better standard of living. Uh, here on this earth right now, but it says that uh, there's a scripture. Let me turn to, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Psalms, the second chapter. We'll turn to that scripture. Uh, but but this is the trick that the devil used, even to Jesus, when he told Jesus that bow at my feet, and I'll give the, I'll give you the kingdoms of the earth. Bow and worship me. So what does it mean to inherit the earth? Do we have pleasures? that this, this world has to offer us right now? Or does it mean that I am I'm, I'm waiting for that new heavens and the new earth? Uh, that, that Christ is going to, uh, going to make everything new when he comes back. See, uh, there are two ways we can think of inheriting the earth when we read the scripture. The first is that I, I really become meek and I get to inherit the earth that God gives. But the second way is that I worship the devil in my heart and I get to inherit the earth or I get to have something from the, from the present earth. These are very two, two very different ways. And I don't want to talk about inherit, inheriting the earth here, here tonight. I don't want to talk that. But since we are there, let me turn to Psalm, the second, the second Psalm. Uh, let me check if that's the scripture I'm looking for. I think this was written by David, which was prophetically speaking about Jesus and the prayer of Jesus here in Psalm uh, 2 and verse, let me see, let us read from verse 6 onwards. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. See, see this is talking about Jesus. And, and Jesus' life is an example of how he lived on this earth. And Jesus' life becomes an example for me, how I need to live my life when I am on this earth. And he says in verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the nations or the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. 
This was the inheritance that Jesus sought. And this is the earth that I want to inherit. Not, not earthly things that are, that are at the devil's disposal right now. Not a house or a job or a bigger land or a bigger church or, 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 or a better job. Uh, but, but my prayer is this, that, that in our meekness and in our gentleness, uh, if, the more we are being tamed by the Lord, the more the Lord, uh, the more our will is being tamed by God. When God tames us in our spirit, He will give us the nations, He will give us the earth as an inheritance. That is what the promise means here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. My question to all of us is, can we grow in meekness? And that is what I would like to spend a few moments talking here tonight about the meekness. What it means to be meek in spirit. What it means, blessed are the meek. Uh, what, what it means uh, to have the spirit of meekness. Again, our example is Jesus. It's Jesus. He was an example of meekness. And my question is that can we all grow in meekness during these times? Even individually and even as a church. And this will also help us increase our influence in the society we are in. And people will be drawn to us and the church. See, it's not through singing better or maybe modifying the church better or having having things, better things. Now it's not by it's not by having crusades and services, but the blessings or the inheritance of the Lord comes through our meekness. Jesus said, Blessed are the meek. Here it, the scripture, turn a few pages uh, backwards to Ze the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Seek ye the Lord. It's, it's, uh, it's very important since the days that we are living in to seek the Lord. If there's anything we need to seek today, tonight, is the Lord and His face. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have brought this judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. The day of the Lord's anger, as I was talking earlier, the day of the Lord's anger, it's, it's coming, saints, it's coming. And who shall be here in those days? The scripture says, seek meekness. It may be that you shall be here in the day of the Lord's anger. See, there's a difference between humility and meekness. I don't want to spend time on that. For some people, it may be the same. And I don't want to split hairs here and spend time on this. But meekness is a lot more deeper than humility. See, humility, uh, you can say it's for the soul. That's why it says the humility of the mind. But meekness is of the spirit. It says the meekness, a spirit of meekness. It's a lot deeper. Meekness gets a lot deep inside. And it deals with the motive and the intents uh, uh, of my heart and my spirit. Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 11. So we have talked a lot about humility. Uh, but we need to understand what meekness also is because the promise is not blessed are the humble. The promise is blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. It says humble yourself under the, under the hands of God. But this here says blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. What does it mean to be meek in my spirit? What does it mean to be meek and to be tamed by the Lord? That the Lord will be so glad with those people that he will give them the earth as an inheritance. Here in Matthew 11 and verse 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, verse 29. And learn of me, for I am meek. I am meek and lowly in heart. Learn from me, learn meekness from me, Jesus said, and then you'll find rest for your soul. 
See, he is the example of meekness. Jesus is my example of meekness. Even Paul, let me find that scripture. He, he, he tells the church at Corinth. Uh, he tells that I, I, I come unto you in the spirit of, uh, in the spirit of meekness. Uh, if I am not mistaken. Uh, yes, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. It says, now I Paul myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. See, he says, not my meekness. Not my meekness. I come to you, I beseech you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. Christ was meek. Christ was gentle. And if there's any example of a meek man, a meek person or a gentle person, it is Jesus Christ. He says, and I come, in, come to you, I beseech you by the meekness of Christ. And it says, Matthew 5 says, the meek will inherit the earth. See, but, but the first step, I, if I, I made a statement that humility and meekness are not the same, but the first step, I think, towards meekness is humility. See, it's humility. But meekness, as I said, it builds on humility. It's a lot deeper than humility. And it shouldn't take, it shouldn't take external circumstances for us to be meek. I don't need to go through problems to become meek. I don't think so, yes. Uh, but meekness is a daily walk with God. Yes, God does bring external circumstances to break me, to keep me humble. He, he puts a thorn in my flesh. Uh, but, but whether these things are there in my life or not, meekness or gentleness is a choice that we have to make and we have to walk in. See, Paul needed a thorn. Paul needed a thorn in his flesh to keep him from being exalted. He says, lest I be exalted above measure. Lest I be exalted above measure. Paul needed a thorn in his flesh. And sometimes since God gives us a thorn in our flesh. Sometimes God takes us through trials. He takes us through situations. There is a sickness that he places upon our body to break us. Or to make us humble. See, the thorn was was to, to make Paul humble because of the abundance of revelation he said that I have received the Lord gave me a thorn in my flesh and sometimes we need a thorn in our flesh to keep us from being exalted to keep us humble but if you read Paul's last epistle his last letter to his son Timothy in the Lord he, he says in 2nd Timothy let's read his last letter to Timothy uh, the, the second epistle of Timothy, uh, to Timothy and in, in chapter 4 he never mentions the, the thorn in his flesh again to anyone except the church at Corinth he never, he never talked about the, about the thorn in his flesh again but here let's read from verse onward, 1 onward 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he says I charge thee before I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Paul warned Timothy of the day coming where people will not love to hear the truth. Well, Timothy saw those days and we are seeing those days in our time also. And it says in verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And then he says, now I am ready to be offered. He says, I am ready uh, to die. For the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. See, Paul didn't need a thorn in his flesh every time for him to become meek. Yes, he need, needed it initially. But there came a time in Paul's life where meekness was a way of life. When you met Paul during his last days, he was the meekest man you could ever meet. 
That was Paul, the great apostle. And I believe that was the same for all the disciples of Jesus. Peter was strong. He was a strong fisherman. He was strong in his spirit. But I think as you met Peter during his last days, his spirit was more, more gentle and more meek. He, he was not the same old fisherman that, that 30 years ago. But now he had changed. And Paul had changed. Paul's life was, was changed. He was not the same Paul uh, that, that, that rebuked the high priest. He was not the same Paul that, that now, I think now if Paul would have met Peter and saw Peter, what Peter did in Galatia, he wouldn't have rebuked Peter the way he rebuked. But there was a meekness that was developed in Paul. There was a gentleness that was, that was, that was, that was generated in Paul. And that was Paul's, that was Paul's desire to walk in that meekness and walk in that gentleness of Christ. And, and he, 10 to 15 years later, after he writes to the church at Corinth about a thorn in his flesh, he doesn't mention the thorn again in his last epistle to Timothy. But he was a meek man. He didn't need a thorn anymore. But he had made the choice. It was, it was worked by the Holy Spirit inside Paul's spirit. See, meekness is the working of the spirit. It can't be done in the flesh. It can't be done by human strength. Meekness cannot be generated by human strength. That's why meekness is one of the fruit of the spirit. Humility, yes, I can grit my, 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 my teeth and I can do things and I can try to be humble. That's good, that's the beginning, but I think we need to graduate from humility to meekness. Meekness in our speech, meekness in the way we treat people, meekness in the way we talk, meekness in the way we, 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 we move around and we, we, we present ourselves. There has to be a certain uh, meekness. There's a lot of scripture that talks about meekness. We'll talk about, we'll go through the scriptures maybe, maybe next service, but but since here we have an example, Paul said, for we have compassed by so great a cloud of witnesses. Since the apostles are a cloud of witness, and I believe their life, uh, as, you, as, you, as you walk with them, as you spend some time with them, you could see meekness being generated in their lives. You could see meekness being a way of life in, 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 uh, with the apostles. And it's the first time the word meek comes in the Bible is in, is in Numbers. The first time the word meek is, is mentioned in the Bible is in Numbers 12. And we all know this, 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 this scripture, it talks about Moses. Numbers 12 and verse 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which are upon the face of the earth. That was not the case when, Moses, when God called Moses 40 years earlier. That was not the case when Moses was 80 years old, when God called him and asked him to bring his people out of Egypt. But here, Moses', is, Moses spirit is being changed. It was not the same Moses who killed an Egyptian soldier with a blow. But now Moses' spirit is being is being tamed by God. It's one thing for us somehow to try to tame our anger. It's one thing for the Lord to tame our spirit. And we willingly submit to the Lord's commands. We willingly submit to the word of God. We willingly decide to give everything related to our life in God's hands, knowing that He is in charge. He is in control. We willingly suffer wrongfully. And we don't give it back. Even though we can give it back, but we don't give it back. And it says here in Numbers 12 and verse 3, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. It took time for Moses to come to this level. It took time for Moses to come. And it takes time for God's children even today to come to this level of meekness. 
to come to a level where their spirit is tamed by God to where for to them to live is Christ and to die is Christ where to them the way of the cross is the only way as Jesus said I am the way and how what way do you go to follow Jesus is the way of the cross always and the cross is an instrument of death it puts my myself to death but that death experience doesn't make me bitter it makes me sweet the more you crush a child of God a sweet aroma a sweet fragrance of Christ comes out of their spirit that's 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 meekness and the word here in Matthew 5 the Greek word used in Matthew 5 is spelled like our our English word pray P-R-A-Y but I think so it's pronounced like pray O and it means a gentleness of spirit that word meek means a gentleness of spirit let me read you that the, the, the meaning of that of that the word meek from the Bible dictionary it says meekness toward God is that disposition of the spirit in which we accept his dealings with us as good what however the Lord is dealing with us we accept his dealing with us as as good for all things we know work together for good to them that love God and we accept everything we accept all the dealings of the Lord towards us as good and therefore without disputing or resisting we accept God's will there's no murmuring there's no disputing there's no resisting in the spirit of a meek man he accepts the will of God without any disputings or murmurings the, the meek the meek one uh, the meek are those that wholly rely on God rather than on their own strength to defend against injustice they don't deny they don't depend on their own strength oh I'll fight this let me handle this situation let me let me handle him let me handle her let me give it back to them let me let me it's not about me a meek man a meek woman is totally relying on God rather on themselves or their own strength to defend against injustice thus meekness towards evil people means knowing God is permitting the injuries they inflict he is using them to purify his elect in his time I realize a meek person realize that whatever injustice or whatever the, 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 the evil people are in, inflicting on me it is it is through God to purify my spirit a scripture says in here in Isaiah Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 17 and the Lord is mindful of such people he's mindful of the poor and the needy and the meek he always comes to their help and rescue it says in Isaiah 41 verse 17 when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord will hear them I the God of Israel will not forsake them it's if they are so they the meek the the, the, the meek man or a meek woman is so God dependent that they know if God doesn't show up if God doesn't turn up they are gone they are destroyed and God looks for such men and women who totally depend on him for everything who don't want to fight their own battle as God says the battle the scripture says the battle is the Lord's the Lord shall fight your battle but these that's that's what the meek and a gentle spirit is dependent on God and gentleness or meekness is opposite to self-assertiveness it stems from trust in God's goodness and control over the situation God is good 
and God is in control. Whatever God does, He does it for my good. And whatever happens, God is in charge. God is in control. Even though I may think that things are not happening according to the way I thought it should happen. According to the way I planned my life. Some things do not happen the way I thought them to happen. But, but it will turn out for my good. Because God is good and God is in charge. He is in control over every situation. The gentle person is not occupied with self at all. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. Meekness cannot be, be generated by the flesh or by the strength of the flesh or by my human strength. Meekness is the work of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. That's why in Galatians 5, meekness is one of the fruit of the Spirit. It says the verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Meekness. It, it cannot be generated or developed by human strength. God's Spirit has to get involved in our lives. It's the working of the Holy Spirit. That's why some people can never be meek. They speak in tongues, but they are never meek in their spirit. Their words are harsh. Their, their, the way they talk is it's rough. It's harsh. There's no gentleness. There's no meekness. There's, there's, there, because the spirit is not meek. If the spirit is meek, my words will become meek. If the spirit is not meek, I may put on a form of humility, but, but it will not hold on for long. That form will, 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 will fall off one day and a, a situation or a circumstance will, prove, will, will show my true self, my true nature. But a man who is tamed by God, a man who's gone through the rough and through the grind. A man who's by experience learned that nothing can happen to them unless God allows it to happen. And nothing, no weapon that is formed against them will prosper. And nothing, even, even the devil is under God's control. And this, there's a spirit of meekness that's generated or that's developed in, in, in a godly man. There's, it talks that spiritual maturity sense, meekness will never come in a babe who, in a life who's babe in Christ. Oh no, meekness is, 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 is developed in the fathers, in mature individuals, in mature men and women, in mature Christians. It takes a lifetime for meekness to be developed. And I think the more a child of God gets closer to God, the more a child of God gets closer uh, to, 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 uh, to, to God's um, presence, and the more the Lord works in his or her life, the more meek they become in their life. There's no, there's no grumbling, there's no murmuring, there's no disputing, there's no complaining. But they depend on God. And such people say it's God always, always takes care of the poor in spirit, of the meek. Because, because the spirit of meekness, it says in God's sight, it's of great price. If Peter talks about it, we'll go, we'll, there's a lot of scriptures where I think we'll continue it next time. Peter talks about that the spirit of meekness in God's sight is of great value. It's of great price. God very, very rarely finds a person, a man or a woman who is meek. Very rarely. I believe that's a quality of the bride of Christ. We, we may put on a show for some time. But one, but something or someone rubs us the wrong way. 
the show ends and all meekness that I was showing goes down the drain and my true self comes up. Meekness is not something you put on. Meekness is something that is developed on the inside of a man's heart. It's the meekness of the spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's something that is much deeper than humility. And since God rewards the meek, He rewards the meek. And I hope that we will have a longing in our heart to have the Spirit of Christ. What does it mean to have the Spirit of Christ? Christ, Jesus said in Matthew 11, learn of me, learn two things of me, he says. For I am meek and I am lowly in heart, I am gentle, I am humble. Learn these two things and you will find rest for your soul. We may know the doctrines, we may know the Bible, we may know the scriptures left, right and center, we may know how to preach, we may know, we may know how to speak, we may be good orators, we may, we may be prayer warriors, we may do, but if there is no meekness, if there is no meekness, there is no testimony. A meek man and a meek woman points to Christ. And Paul and the apostles and these, these cloud of witnesses mentioned in the Bible, they lived they, they died as meek. They were meek. They didn't, even, they didn't even revile against the Roman prisoners that kept them in prison. In fact, they prayed for them. They prayed for them. They spoke good to them. They spoke, they blessed those people that put them in prison. And when Jesus said, bless them that curse you, Pray for them that despitefully use you. It's not easy to do it, but a meek person, and only a meek person can do that. It's very easy to preach, it's very easy to quote these scriptures, it's very easy to, 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 to say that yes, this is how we need to live. But since when we are put into that position where we are revived, and we are, we are spoken ill against. What do we do? What comes out of us? Does reviling come out? Does defending ourselves come out? Or do we just sit quiet and we, we leave it in the hands of God? And let God have His way. So we'll continue this lesson later. There's, there's a lot, of, lot more scriptures here. I don't want to start something and now end it but I believe the Lord is, 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 wants something from us He wants us to get into a deeper relationship with Him he's, he's, Let's not be satisfied with, with what we had till now if, if you think you have got it all then God would have taken you out of this earth because you are perfect. No, but the reason why we are alive is because God's work in our life is not yet over. Our spirit is not yet tamed by God wholly. Our mind is not yet renewed. We are not yet following the Lamb wholly. We are still partaking of the table, Lord's table and the table of the devil and the table of this world. We still worship the devil, believe it or not, we are still worshipping the devil when we, when the world attracts us more than God, saints, we are still worshipping the devil. We are still feeding from his table. We are still drinking from the cup of the devil. And we can't drink from the cup of the devil and the cup of the Lord. We can't sail in two boats. We can't be, well, Jesus told the church at Laodicea, you either be hot or cold. Don't try to play church. You either stay in church or get out of the church. 
and because Christianity is become so lukewarm today that very rarely the spirit of Christ is being preached from pulpits. And very rarely you see an example of a meek man or a meek woman for you to follow. I hope and pray that God raises up men and women in the body of Christ that will be meek in their spirit. That will be examples for other for others, for young men and young women to follow Christ wholeheartedly. Thank God for a church. Thank God for His Word. I, I wish that, that this takes a hold of our hearts, saints, and we'll meditate on these words and we'll meditate on the scriptures. There's so much of technology available that a click of a button, you'll get to know all the scriptures under the word meek or meekness. You'll get those 25, 30 scriptures. You can study those scriptures diligently and see what the Bible talks about being meek or the, or, or the spirit of meekness and how God values a man or a woman who is meek in their spirit. It's very important, saints. Very, very important. So let's meditate on the word of God. Let's have our minds renewed. Let, 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 let us God transform our lives and to renew that spirit, renew that the fire on the altar of our souls. Let's ask God, let's pray to ask, ask the Lord to help us in our life saints. Otherwise, we'll just live and die as, as a substandard Christian and just call ourselves the body of Christ. But we'll be miles away from the way the body of Christ lived on this earth 2,000 years ago. If we call ourselves the body of Christ, let's live like that body of Christ lived on this earth 2,000 years ago. Let's live like that. Let's be dedicated. Let's be radical Christians. A radical Christian doesn't force his religion on everyone. A radical Christian is the one who hates sin and loves the people around him. If we want to live as radical Christians, we need to hate sin and detest sin and sinful live. The scripture talks about a church without even a spot of sin, without even a wrinkle of sin. Our lives should be without even a spot of sin. I'm not saying we will be sinless one day, no. But I'm talking about hating sin so much. The very mention, the very thought of that sin should, should make us to hate it, detest it, throw it out of our minds and our hearts. The very thought of that sin. And that's how you get closer to God. That's how you live the way Christ lived. His, his, his life is an example for us. We'll look at that scripture. We'll go through that scripture in Peter's letters. Peter's epistle. Thank God for our church. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to pray that the Lord helps us as this pandemic is rising up rising its head again this, this COVID-19 virus is getting deadlier it says the, the the this mutant strain is more deadly than what it was that what the earlier uh, earlier strain was uh, let's pray that the Lord continues to keep our children safe keep his children safe not only here but throughout the body of Christ let's continue to pray for the ministry for the churches let's continue to pray for the families the ones that are sick and weak among us the Lord touches their bodies and his healing virtue passes through them and makes them to realize God's importance in their lives. Let's pray for the work of the church, work of the work of the ministry. Let's pray for Brother and Sister Senji. Let's remember them in our prayers always. They send their love and their greetings to each and every one of you. Amen. Let's all pray.
Heavenly Father, we appreciate you once again for these words that you gave us here. We thank you for your word that's been given to us, that's a source of life. Lord, we thank you for the example that you gave us in the form of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Lord, as you, as you touch our hearts about and let us know more about a meek spirit. Lord, we just don't want to talk about it, but we want to live the way Jesus lived. We want to have that meekness of the spirit. Oh Lord, we want to be meek because your word says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Lord, we are not longing for anything this world, this present earth has to offer. Lord, but that earth that will give the heathen as an inheritance to each and every one of your meek child. Father, help us. Help us as, a, as individuals, help us as a church, help us as a body to live the way Christ lived and to emanate the spirit of Christ through us and to have the meekness and the gentleness of Christ seen in our lives, so oh, Father. Till we come back Sunday morning, be with us. Bless the church throughout the body, the ministers, the saints of God, the families in the church. Take care of all your children, Father. Brethren and sisters, you continue to cover them, protect them and keep them close to you. We we'll once again commit each and every one of us in our lives in your precious hands. In Jesus' precious name, we ask and pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.